Happy birthday. Hey, thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> Good luck and everything you need for the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Martina. Bless you. So, so great that you could make this call. I'm really happy you're here. It's great. Me too, me too. Sometimes I miss the time uh, differences, so I wasn't there. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Try and get a sense of everyone who's on the call. It's so amazing, this technology. <laughs> I've been it taking, is. yeah, I've been taking 12 students through a six month in the alchemy mentoring program, and we're nearly at the end of the program. It uh, finishes in June, and it's been amazing. You know, it's been really amazing. Super. And I'm starting to see that doing these more, having this online is actually very good for um, more consistent interaction and long-term mm -hmm. interaction with people. It's, it's, exactly. been really, it's, it's been really wonderful. Yeah, it's been really, really good. And uh, yeah. so, so that's why I'm doing the longer Wujigong teacher training as well, because I realized, you know, that just just a weekend is not enough it's really not enough no um, no. So, no it's good for the development yeah 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 anyway welcome everyone i see there's a lot of us on the call which is really wonderful i'm really happy that you're all here so a big bow to all of you and uh welcome and uh <laughs> and yeah i i want to just really invite all of you to, to make this a, a really beneficial time for all of you. you know, I've been teaching inner alchemy now and practicing inner alchemy now for many, many years. And I feel like I'm just scratching the surface, you know, from the point of view of what's possible with it, you know. So we have a we have a subject tonight which is all about this is there a separation really between the material and the spiritual and and my deep understanding of that is a, is a very firm there is no separation there really is no separation and uh but humanity as a whole we we experience a separation so it's it's sort of a paradox you know the question is almost like a a, a trick question you know <laughs> because even though all of nature doesn't experience the separation human souls do you know and we're born into male and female bodies that's that's one of the primary splits one of the reasons one of the main reasons why we experience this separation is because of the split of the sexes because our androgynous souls are split into male and female bodies. So this gives us a feeling deep inside of ourselves that there's something missing, you know? And that split between them, you know, that's, that split of how that androgynous soul is put into a male body or a female body is really a reflection of a, a deeper split between matter and spirit. That humanity, I believe, is here to solve, is here to resolve. And and inner alchemy and especially with Qigong uh, are the solutions to that, to that split, you know. So I want to make it really clear that deep inside our soul, our androgynous soul, there is no split. The soul is very conscious of its connection back to source. 
but because we're put into a male or female body, half of our soul is sort of missing. It's unconscious for us. And the goal of inner alchemy, the first goal anyway, is to resolve this split inside of us, is to, is to, is to make the androgynous soul more conscious. And the Taoists have a word for that. Uh, they call it the completion of destiny. And the Taoists have these two very important words. One of those words is called Ming, which roughly translated means your worldly destiny. And the other one is called Shin, which is spelled X-I-N, and it means spiritual destiny. And so the Taoists, in my tradition anyway, want to cultivate both at the same time. They want to cultivate worldly destiny and spiritual destiny. And how, how do you do that? You know, that's, that's really the question. And the answer, as far as I, I am concerned and experience, is that we have to make our soul, our androgynous soul, conscious in this body, conscious in this dimension. We have to make the soul real. And we have to make it our experience, not a concept, but our experience. And so the Taoists call this process the development of the inner child or the inner fetus. That's the first step. It's the first step in creating a child is you have a feet. Actually, the first step is you have to get pregnant. <laughs> you have to get pregnant. So your inner male and inner female actually have to make love inside of yourself. And that's what we do when we dance with Jigong or when we practice inner alchemy. We're learning how to do that. Basically, we're learning how to have the two halves of our soul copulate inside of ourselves. And then that, that gives birth to what's called our true inner self, our authentic inner self, which the Taoists call your inner child. And it's this inner child, the development of this inner child that I'm most interested in within myself and in training you know other people in developing that within themselves and and you know this this alchemy approach is is actually very unique it's very different and it's very different to many other parts and the main reason that it's different is this what the Taoists call the jing or this sexual essence or if you like it's our body you know the body so the body has to be involved in your enlightenment. So there are many, many parts that talk about awareness and presence and cultivating that. And of course, it's a, it's a wonderful practice, you know, and, and many, many parts talk about, you know, just being present and that presence is your inner child. But I don't know many parts that tell you how to actually crystallize that inner self so that it has jing, so that it has substance, so that you actually have this sense that your soul is real, that it's not just an awareness. Because I know all of you, you know, all of you have done a lot of deep inner work on yourself, and you know what I'm talking about when I say your presence, your awareness. So everyone is usually conscious of that part of themselves that's always witnessing their life. But the key, as far as I can tell, and it's been my experience, it's not enough just to have, not to just have the awareness or what the Taoists call the Shen. We also need to have the Jing activated. We need to have this sense that our soul has some type of embodiment, some sort of crystallization. And this is what the Taoists call the inner child. You know, the, it starts off as an inner fetus, it grows up to become an inner child and later on it becomes your inner sage, your inner sage. And this sage is free in all dimensions of existence. And it really is the, we can say it, 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 cultivating this is really what we call cultivating your highest destiny. So it, the best way to, to think about this is just to compare it to a regular child in, in the world, you know, like every child that's born into the world has a destiny has a worldly destiny and has a spiritual destiny. You can say, you know, every child that's born has that. But cultivating your inner child, which by the way, a, a male or a female can do, that's another unique thing about this. In the physical dimension, 
dimension, only a, a woman can give birth to a child, but spiritually, both men, male, men and women can give birth to their authentic self. Okay. And so this inner child, when you cultivate this inner child, that is your highest destiny, both your worldly destiny and your spiritual destiny. And when you cultivate it, there is no separation between your physical life and your worldly life. There is no separation when you cultivate that aspect of yourself. It is one of the most fulfilling and completing things that you can do in your life. And how do I know that? <laughs> because I've been walking the path for many, many years and feeling what happens inside my energy body as I as I cultivate that aspect of myself. You know? And, you know, many of you know Wujigong, many of you have practiced it. And I really believe that Wujigong is something that, for me, is like a gift for humanity at this time, because it does have this aspect of cultivating the Jing aspect of your soul. You know, Wujigong can do that. Um, it won't take you the whole way, you know, just practicing with Jigong every day won't take you the whole way of really cultivating your inner child. You need the inner alchemy formulas of immortality to do that. And that's, that's my other main mission is to, is to train people in that cultivation practice. And that's what this six month mentoring program that I've been running is about. You know, I've actually, you know, decided that I wanted to take students through that process. And it's been wonderful, you know, it's really been wonderful. And, and to see the students actually cultivate this inner child inside of them and to feel how powerful it is to do that and, and how it dissolves when you cultivate this inner child, it dissolves your fixed yin yang patterns of your personality. It starts to dissolve them from the inside out. And that's the other unique thing about inner alchemy is that you don't have to you don't have to like change yourself from the outside in. You actually dissolve the patterns that you carry from the inside out by cultivating the yuan chi, this inner, this, this inner fuel, if you like, of your inner child. It's, it's the source energy. So, you know, maybe some of you are not familiar with that term, yuan chi. But yuan chi is like the lubricating force of this universe. It's the it's the neutral ground, if you like, that is supporting all of life. So it's, it's buried deep inside each one of us. And, the per and when we start to cultivate our, our, our soul, what we're doing is actually tuning into this Yuan Chi, this, this stream of neutral force. It's a neutral force that streams in from the deeper dimensions and it dissolves our outer personality from the inside out. It really is something very remarkable. And uh, all of the students that have been on the course have been noticing that, you know, they've been noticing, like in the beginning, how they started, they were so caught up in all their patterns, you know, and, and you know, a lot of the emotional patterns, because I took them through slowly, you know, like we, we went through the early formulas, we went through the fusion formulas, which is all about working with the emotional body. We learned the inner smile. We did the six healing sounds. We did a lot of clearing of the personality, basically. But then we've been, the last two months, we've been working with this inner sexual alchemy, which is the real alchemy. It's the, it's the first formula that is, that is helping you develop this inner child. And it's been amazing to see the students um, start to be able to dissolve their patterns from the inside out and every one of them has had a has beautiful experience of that and every one of them has felt it's been a profound journey you know and it's been a profound journey for me to be on that journey with them all um, you know i've been learning and growing a lot through the process and deepening my own cultivation practice of my inner child and i honestly feel you know hand on my heart that that is the, the greatest thing we can do with our life is to develop this inner child, is to develop this, to, 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 make our call, to make our soul conscious, 
but not only conscious, actually functional in this dimension. And when we do that, there is no split between the material and the spiritual. We really have the capacity to see that our worldly destiny supports our spiritual destiny and our spiritual destiny supports our worldly destiny. There is no separation between the two of them. And you learn that very powerfully as you practice Qigong and alchemy, you know. So this is really a very profound spiritual technology. Wujigong is that, it's a profound spiritual technology. And it's my personal mission that I would love very much to have more and more teachers of Wujigong who are really embodied in the principles of alchemy. And this is why I've set up this <clears throat> eight week program online to train teachers in Wujigong, you know, and to take people through a journey of using Wujigong to really cultivate their soul, you know. And so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the training and looking forward to, to offering it to, to everyone. Yeah, so <clears throat> that's my sort of opening, <laughs> opening transmission. Uh, one of the things I do these days is I tend to just let things flow out of me spontaneously from the soul. Uh, I don't really prepare much. <laughs> I do, I sort of prepare a, an overall, you know, in my mind, I prepare something. In my postnatal mind, I prepare things, but I generally just let myself feel the chi flow and, and, and what feels like is arising inside of me at the moment, you know. So I would love to hear from some of you, um, if you're interested, you know, if, you, if you'd like to, your own personal experience of your journey with Wuji Gong and with this, this topic, you know, of uh, the material world and the spiritual world. And do you experience a split? Do you feel like there's a split there for you? And what's that split look like? Is it painful? Is it frustrating? Does it seem never ending? You know, I, that seems to be something that I keep running into with a lot of, I know for a long time in my life, it felt like a never ending thing, this, this feeling that the material world and the spiritual world were somehow separate, you know? And for a lot of people, that's their experience, you know, and I have a lot of compassion for it. I do want to say though, that as you go on on this journey, as we all go on this journey, as humanity goes on in this journey, because it is a, a journey that we're all taking together. I do believe there is light at the end of the tunnel. I, I really do believe that. I'm certainly experiencing that um, myself on the inside. I feel like a lot of the patterns that I was born with as a, you know, as a, as a child uh, have been dissolved through alchemy and through um, my practice. And my interest now is in sharing that with as many people as I can in the world. And, uh, and hence my, my efforts at, you know, building the Wujigong website more and more. You know, I don't know if some of you have noticed, but there's a lot of changes on the Wujigong website. There's a new one out. From the, from the one that's been there for a long time. And I'm still working on that. I'm still, I have a, a team of uh, uh, programmers and designers helping me with that. And so, yeah, I'm just very interested in getting this spiritual technology out to the world. And it's not for everyone, you know, this, this path. This path is really a very, it comes from what we call the wandering Taoists. You know, it comes from, the Lao Tzu's of this world, you know, Lao Tzu who wrote the Tao Te King, you know. So this path is not for everyone. It's a, it's a very, people who are drawn to inner alchemy tend to be very independent people and they don't like to have gurus and bosses and uh, <laughs> teachers. They really love to uh, walk their own path, which I believe is what we're meant to do, you know. So for the Taoists, there are no gurus. There are no real teachers. The, the main teacher is the life force itself, the, 
the three streams of the life force, the yin, the yang, and the yuan. And, we're, and if we cultivate all three, we feel whole. And for many people, this is why Wujigong is so powerful, because not only are we cultivating yin and yang chi, and we're, we're cultivating it in a very balanced way, we're moving through all the directions, and we're harmonizing yin and yang completely, we're harmonizing the yin and yang of all the directions coming into us. And we're balancing those, but we're also opening up our connection to the Yuan Chi with Wujigong. And that's why it's so powerful. It really is a very powerful Qigong form, something very unique, you know, something that I feel very blessed that has been brought into my life. And um, when we practice it, we, we feel like we have these three forces developed inside of us, the yin, the yang, and the Yuan. And the whole purpose of inner you know, alchemy is to is to allow our yin yang energy, which is we use in this in this material world. We use the yin yang energy in our material world. We have to use it, you know. And the problem becomes when those yin yang patterns get stuck. Those are what we call uh, we can call them our shadows, or we can call them energy get they get stuck. The Taoists have a term for that. They call it false yin and false yang. So what is false yin? What is false yang? It just means it's a pattern of chi, either yang chi or yin chi, that is not allowed to move to its natural expression. So yin and yang are always flowing into each other. That you know, it's like nature. You know, so the day turns into the night, the night turns into the day. So we have this pattern of yin yang that's always flowing, and human beings are the only things in nature that tend to get have these patterns get stuck. Nature doesn't get stuck. Nature is always flowing. And this is why the Taoists use nature as an analogy, as something that um, they could um, align their own personal energy body with nature's, with the chi field of nature to, to harmonize their own personal chi field. And so that's what Wujigong is doing. It's harmonizing your energy body, your yin yang energy body with nature. And as you harmonize your yin yang energy, the yuan chi becomes more present. You actually feel the yuan chi more and more and more. And the yuan chi is really the connection back to source. And the yin yang, the playing with yin and yang is really your way to deal with the, the, the material world, you know? We have to be here, we, we're in a body, you know? And as I said in my introductory talk, when we're in the womb, when we're in our mother's womb, we feel our connection, the soul, feels its connection back to source but as soon as we're born that it's almost like that connection it sort of just cuts you know from the soul's perspective because suddenly now it becomes concerned with survival how am i going to survive in this physical dimension you know how am i going to survive here you know and then later on as we go through our life and we go through our journey we suddenly have an awakening we wake up and we realize oh there has to be more to my life than just survival you know, there's got to be something more than survival. <laughs> and that's when we have our spiritual awakening and we start our practice and we start back on the journey back to source, you know. And then we get into trouble, though, because then we so suddenly feel like, oh, my God, I feel so good when I'm connected back to source. But how do I manage my worldly life? You know, how do I manage my material life? And it's a big challenge, you know, big, big challenge for many people. You know? And there are many, uh, many aspects to that. Um, and what I want to say to you is that if you understand that you have these stuck patterns inside of us, we all do, we all have these patterns of yin and yang that are stuck at the personality level, at the physical level, that need to learn how to flow again and how to be easy and how to be relaxed, you know, and and the only way to do that, as far as I can see, without creating a conflict inside of ourselves, is to do that from the inside out, not from the outside in, not by judging ourselves, not by trying to force ourselves to change, not by holding ourselves to a very high standard, um, but by loving ourselves, which is another word for accepting ourselves, you know, and accepting all of the patterns that we have. And, and understanding that actually they're there to really be dissolved from the inside out, you know. And that's what inner alchemy is about. 
That's what cultivating your inner child is about. That's what this teacher training program is going to be about. Um, I intend to take, you know, 20, hopefully 20, 20 or so students through an eight week program uh, with, you know, to really, to really deepen, uh, to really deepen your own understanding of your soul and that there is no separation between what we call Ming and Xing or your, the spiritual and the worldly. And in fact, they are one and the same. And so that is the purpose of this eight week training coming up that starts on Saturday. And we have a really wide variety of people joining us. You know, we have people from Australia, people from Singapore, people from Canada, from Bulgaria, from Romania, from Poland. The first time we have, I have someone from Poland on the course, which is wonderful. Um, we also have people from, where else? From Norway, from Singapore, I think I already mentioned, and Australia as well. So, um, and I'm from, I'm in Bali now, by the way, I've, I've relocated to Bali. <laughs> Very happy to be here. It's been a wonderful uh, time. I've only been here two weeks. I'm currently looking for a new home but I'm already enjoying it very much. The nature here is very wonderful and uh, it's very supportive. And it's, yeah, I, I've been to Bali many times and I've always had a love affair with it because of the spiritual energy of the island. You know, it's very powerful here. Anyway, I went on a bit, even after I asked, asked a question of all of you. <laughs> So does anyone want to ask any questions about this, some of the things that I've talked about or anyone have any comments about what I've shared? I'd love to hear from someone if, you know, if anyone wants to jump in or you can ask me a question about everything that I've shared um, and let me know. Yeah, love to hear from some of you. Try and see everyone that's here. Yeah, so actually, oh, Marius, you're here. That's wonderful. Great, Marius. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Adele from South Africa. You're, you're going to be joining the program, right? Yeah. Wonderful. Great. And yeah. um, Andrew, if I may share, um, yeah. uh, I've got a few of my Qigong students online. Um, they haven't experienced with Qigong. Um, uh -huh. I think they six or seven of... of, of um of the Qigong students that are invited so they may have specific questions on on which Qigong and another guest that haven't experienced Qigong either so oh I didn't know okay okay and I went into a very deep subject <laughs> okay so they haven't learned Wuji at all they haven't learned it at all but no they're no. just curious about oh. it oh okay yeah, yeah. Right. and 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 topic about you know that's the 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 I think about the topic, so so um, I, 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 well, we'll hear from them, but I feel, I feel it's all very valuable, so thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm talking about the big picture there, but of course, Wiji Gong is also really good for lots of things in people's lives. You know, it's, it's balancing of your energy. That's number one. That's the number one thing that it does here. Like, so for example, you know, when I travel, when I, you know, especially if I'm traveling a long way, when I get to a new place, I always practice with Qigong because it helps me harmonize my own energy with the environmental energy. So with Qigong is really a, a really, it's like a dance to all the directions, you know, the sacred directions. And it really helps harmonize your own personal energy body with nature's energy body. So maybe I need to talk about the Taoist. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. That feels good to talk about the energy body. What is the energy body? You know, the Taoists talk about this all the time. They say, well, you have an energy body. You know, you have to cultivate your energy body. So what is that, right? And is it different to your physical body, the energy body? And the short answer to that is no, it's not. Your physical body is just the outer manifestation, a very slow, manifesting aspect of your energy body actually it's just energy vibrating very slowly 
And the whole Taoist viewpoint on our energy body is that we need to make it all conscious, not just our physical body, which is the outer layer of the, the Taoist energy body, but we need to make it all conscious. It's all actually flowing. And so from the perspective of your original self, that the self that we all share in common, what, what the Taoists call the original spirit, there is no separation. It's the, the original spirit just feels like this little body you, like Adele or me, Andrew, that identifies with its physical body, it's sort of, I mean, it, it doesn't really have a personality, so it doesn't look at it like that. But if it did look at it like that, it would be like, don't you know you're connected to me? <laughs> and, you know, all this drama that you're in, you know, it's not really, it's, it's, it's all perfect, you know. That's how that that part of you would, would talk to you. It doesn't talk to you like that, of course. It just loves you unconditionally because it, it knows it, you're an aspect of it. You know? So we all have that deep inside of us, this original spirit, this part of us that's, that's connected to everything and everyone. I mean, if we, all, we, if we all just close our eyes and just tune in, you know, we can all do that right now. We can just recognize that every one of us at the deepest level of ourselves is connected, you know. You just close your eyes and just take a deep breath and just feel that even though I'm talking, we're all connected. There's there's something deep inside each of us, this presence, this consciousness that is that is the same in each one of us. And that is love. It's pure love. But it's, it's, it's a love that's very difficult for us as human beings to understand because it's completely an impersonal love. It's not a personal love. It's not a, it's not a mummy and daddy love. It's not a love that God is up there like loving us and teaching us. It's not that type of love. It's a completely impersonal love. It's completely impersonal. And it's impersonal because we're given the gift of free will. We're given the gift to explore all of these different dimensions, especially the physical dimension. And so this love that is in the core of each of us, that the Taoists first cultivate with what's called the inner smile. This inner smile is this pure love at the deepest dimension of ourselves. And the inner smile is that recognition of that. You know? So it really is an inner smile. It's not an outer smile. It's, it's just recognizing that that inner self that is, is present in each one of us, is present in everything. And it's shining its love, its unconditional, pure love, but it's an impersonal, very detached love. It's, it's, it's not a love of concern. It's a, it's a complete impersonal love. And that's inside each one of us. And Wuji Gong is designed to open us up to that love and to make that love more conscious inside each one of us so that it becomes our truth, you know? So this inner child that we develop through Wujigong and in alchemy will eventually heal us of everything, you know? It will, it will heal all of our sickness, all of our disease, all of our challenges, all of our difficulties, and it will allow us to feel no separation between this original spirit and our heart shen, our personal heart shen. So the heart in each of us is the way we connect back to this original spirit. So you can all just tune into your heart. And it's not the physical heart, it's deeper than the physical heart. It's not the emotional heart, which can be very troubling for many of us be very impatient, very judgmental. It's much deeper than the emotional heart. It's our spiritual heart. 
And that is what we all share in common is this, what the Taoists call the Yuan Shen or the original spirit. It's inside each and every one of us as the spark of our own presence, our own awareness. So we each have that presence in our heart, but that's also connected back to this great love, this great impersonal love of source. The Taoists call that Tai Yi, Tai Yi, or the great oneness. That's the, you know, the closest concepts the Taoists have to God, you know, God or Goddess. You know? Tai Yi, great oneness. It's pure love, pure impersonal love that's nourishing each and every one of us. And when we practice with G, we're, we're cultivating that aspect of ourselves, this pure love deep inside. And the purpose of all alchemy is to make that love conscious inside of us and to consciously use that love to dissolve all of our fixed patterns, all of the fixed mental patterns, fixed emotional patterns, fixed physical patterns, so that our chi can flow like nature. So our chi is flowing so that we become what we call authentic. Or wu wei is another word, Taoist word, wu wei, natural, authentic expression. Yeah. So Wujigong is really a beautiful metaphor. You know, it's a metaphor for that Wu Wei experience, but it's also a, a method that allows us to become more spontaneous and more authentic and allow this great inner love to, to shine from our inner hearts. And it's funny, you know, many people, they learn Wuji and they, they feel really good, you know, but they definitely, some people have a challenge to integrate that into their daily life. And, and that's because it, it takes time, you know, it just takes time to do that. But I know the more you practice it, you know, uh, the easier it gets, you know, the easier it gets. And, uh, and especially if you start adding in the inner alchemy formulas, of immortality as well, then then, it, then everything gets speeds up in your life and becomes more of this flowing Yuan Chi. Mm. So yeah, let's open our eyes again. <laughs> Hopefully you could feel that nice love from source from tai yi flowing in through your heart how many of you could feel that <laughs> yeah it's powerful right i could feel it i could feel it in the cauldron here <laughs> so um yeah Robin, you're on the call, right? Robin is one of the students from the Inner Alchemy training program. Are you here, Robin? I thought I saw you just now. Maybe you left. Hi, Andrew. Yes. I'm oh, you here. are here. You are here. There you are. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was just I was just telling everyone about the, the program and how you, we've been dissolving patterns from the inside out and um, I wonder if you're like willing to share a little bit of your experience of that, because, you know, you're always telling me after every course we do, you're always saying something like, oh, my God, this spiritual technology, you know, <laughs> like you're always sort of uh, like, yeah, I would say, how can I say this? Um, yeah, you're like a you're like a really textbook student for me, you know, you're, you're <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you, I just know, you just, I find you a very dedicated person, you know, and you really, you've really put these inner alchemy practices, I mean, everyone on the course who's joined this six month course has had to get serious about it, because that, you know, you, you don't really have, we meet every week, right, in this format, we, we do a, we do a two hour two and a half hour meeting every Tuesday. 
And we also do these weekend trainings, you know, which are more deep. And then you have your own personal practice. So maybe you just talk a little bit about this idea of the inner child and like what your experience of that has been, because that would be a nice for people to hear from you I think would be really nice if you don't mind it would be really great because sometimes when people hear me just rattling on you know they, they want to hear another perspective you know? <laughs> I'm happy to share um, oh thanks Robin <laughs> I still you know I still find it hard sometimes to really put into words yeah but it is isn't it I'll try I'll try to share um and maybe also just to share a bit more of my story, um, yeah, yeah, just sure. like you were sharing in the beginning of the call. Um, I have been on this journey for a long time and the spiritual journey. And for the first, probably around for the first decade of that, um, I was very, very much connected with the Indian tradition. And I lived for five years in India. It was very... Uh, very much in the the guru paradigm and i had a very dedicated spiritual practice a very ideal life in a lot of ways but i was still deeply struggling on a lot of levels with my physical health and with my emotions and and i i learned what you going from andrew two years ago um and as soon as I learned the form, it really was like a, a feeling of coming home and just the way that Andrew would speak about things. So there was something very interesting there, like something I felt had been missing in my practice. And yeah, like I really started to, to shift in a lot of ways since starting to practice Wuji Gong, it really changed my life. And then obviously <laughs> this year, um, of the last months with the, the deeper inner alchemy training, it's been deeply deeply transformative and i feel like i'm really starting to understand in my body a lot of these concepts that andrew speaks about around the inner child and and just like even on a deeper level would you gong already like there's a, a very powerful sense of dissolving um the stuck in yang patterns and and now it's just it's just keeps going even deeper and becoming more profound and i really am I'm so deeply grateful and in awe of this spiritual technology, uh, which and, and just to have access to this. Um, I do have the sense of this inner child, like something starting to grow inside of me. Uh, it's becoming more stable. And last night in the class, um, we took the meditations deeper and I had a very profound experience and I can say that today, you know, I haven't done my practice yet today. And since last night, since this meditation, I feel like consistently through the day, I'm just so connected with my core and just really feeling this deep, immense, feeling connected with this immense love pouring out through the deeper dimensions. And as I've been going about my day, I've actually been connected with that. And, and that is such a, like, it's so profound. It's such a new way of being. And I can really feel through these meditations how, the, yeah, the sense of really dissolving from the inside on a very deep, very profound level. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure that's what's coming through right now. <laughs> that's great. Um, <laughs> And I'm just, I'm truly so grateful. And yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, that's my experience as well. I have a lot of gratitude to this transmission and to these formulas of immortality that were originally transmitted to Mantachia, you know, by this Taoist hermit called One Cloud. And um, Wu Qigong, by the way, is is not part of that transmission. It's another transmission. Um, but it is from the same uh, the same Taoist sort of lineage, you know. Like it's uh, it has the same background, I would say. It is an alchemical, you know, formula for immortality. There's no doubt about that in my mind, you know. And I think how what how Wu Jigong is unique is that it's very available for anyone. You know, you you don't have to be deeply spiritual or 
you know, to benefit from it. You know, that's what's really interesting about Woody Gong is that you could be a complete cynic, you know, and a complete atheist and still get a benefit from Woody Gong. You know, it's that powerful. And, and it shows you how this great love at source really doesn't care about our beliefs, you know. <laughs> it doesn't care if we're an atheist or still loves us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to understand this you know that 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 life loves the murderer as much as the saint you know and it's really true you know because we have this free will you know we've given this gift of free will bob and i want to thank you very much i, I think everyone could feel your truth that was coming through you and uh, you know, people can feel that, you know, people can feel authentic expression, you know, that that is unmistakable when people express from their truth, you know. So anyway, there's someone asked a question about, um, I want to answer. Thank you, Robin. Um, how can Qigong help with severe depression? Okay, that's a great question and very practical question. So <clears throat> let's give the Taoist view of depression. You know? So for the Taoist, that would mean it's, a, it's a, a stuck pattern in the yin of the lungs, of the lung spirit, what we call the Po spirit. So you have to understand that for the Taoists, um, our inner world is not, just, is not just singular. Our inner world is actually a committee. It's a committee of organ spirits, or the Taoists call these body spirits. And if you like, they're all living under the roof of your soul, you know? And it's the job of your soul to manage these organ spirits. So you could say depression is really the separation of the lung from its original spirit. It's, it's disconnected from its source. And it's got stuck in that. It's, it's got really, you know, very, very stuck. The, the lung chi has got very um, in a pattern that we call depression, you know, that a, a psychologist would call depression. But from the Taoist viewpoint, it, it's a pattern of energy that's got stuck, that is not flowing. And it's been my experience that depression is actually the inability to truly feel what's going on in our life. You know, it's the way our soul, you know, wakes us up to something that's missing, that's something that's very important. Like depression is really a, a sign that there's something very important in our life that we're not putting our attention on. That that's, would be the Taoist view of depression. And the way Qigong would, would deal with that, especially Wu Qigong, is you would just practice daily, you know, hopefully once or twice a day if, if the depression is quite serious, you would practice with Qigong. And you would practice with a sincere heart-based intention to get to the root of that depression. So this is one of the things that I think is really important to understand is that our soul and the, the, the greater aspects of ourselves cannot interfere in our life until we really ask, until we're sincere and ask sincerely you know for support and for guidance and for clarity and so we need these two things we need a practice that is going to help us move that stuck lung chi would you guys very good for that and we need our personality's sincere intention to resolve this depression you know so there has to be a deep longing inside of you to want to resolve it and to be willing to get in touch with whatever feelings are inside that you've, you've suppressed for many, many years. Because often depression is actually something that's been uh, suppressed inside of us, you know, and it's not your fault. You know, none of these symptoms are your fault. And this is something that's very important to understand, like, we, we have to understand that all of us are, are born innocent. We literally are born innocent. And what I've seen in life very much so is that it's these self-judgments that we direct at ourselves that are actually the most harmful thing in our life. 
The Taoists say that self-judgment, judgments are coming from the heart, from the heart shen, from the heart body spirit. So this is why the inner smile is very important. Um, the inner smile is this sense of this deep love, this deep acceptance from life towards each one of us. And each one of us, we, we need to learn, we need to really have the, to be humble and really allow life to support us and love us as, and not to judge ourselves for these patterns. We will judge. I mean, that's, that is part of our journey. We learn to release our self judgments, you know, I mean, in a way, it's the nature of the mind to judge because it's, it's binary in nature. We have a left brain and we have a right brain and we tend to compare all the time. And so we compare ourselves often to a standard or something, you know, but the inner smile is recognizing that there is a deeper level that is non-judgmental inside each one of us. And, and so this is very important not to judge ourselves. So the three things, the Trinity, practice Rigi every day, have a sincere intention and ask for support from your, from your soul, from the Tao Immortals, from your inner guides, recognizing that they're all you, they're not separate to you. Your soul is not separate to you. Your inner guides, you know, angels are not separate from you. They're all part of your higher self. Very important to see that these things are not separate, but they're part of ourselves. So that's the second um, thing that I think is important. And the, the third thing is to, is to let go of your judgments towards yourself and, and recognize that just because one of your lung spirits, your, one of your body spirits is very depressed, it doesn't mean that you, there's something wrong with you. It feels like there's something wrong, but at that deepest level, there's not nothing wrong. You know, it's a pattern of chi that has got stuck, you know, because babies aren't born depressed, right? You know, children are not born depressed. That's not something you, really, you don't really see depression in very young children or small babies. So that is something that's, that, that we learn, you know, it's something that we take on. And again, it's oftentimes it's not our fault. It's never our fault, actually, these patterns. Uh, because they're unconscious oftentimes. These patterns are unconscious. No one would choose to be depressed, right? <laughs> right? You know? So, um, so that's my, that's my, uh, That's my, that's my advice to the, the question that someone asked about how can Qigong help with depression? That they would be those three things. Have a sincere intention to resolve it. You know, really want to resolve it deep inside and ask for support. Release self-judgment and practice with Qigong daily. And I think you'll see some changes in, in that depression. Yeah. So thanks for the question. It's a great question, very practical. Um, let's see if there's any other questions in the chat. Aha, uh -huh. here we go. Andy, all the best for your birthday of yesterday, because I understand it's 2 a.m. in Bali. My question is, is Tai Yi the great central sun of our galaxy through which the energy of source is coming to our sun and then to us? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, tai Yi is, of course, it's not in this dimension. That's what we have to understand. Tai Yi is not in this physical dimension. Um, in the same way that, you know, human beings have an energy body, an invisible energy body, everything in nature has an invisible energy body as well. You know, so a sun, a central sun would have an invisible energy body. And that invisible energy body, if you want to call it, could be Tai Yi. Yes, absolutely. Of course, it, that's what it can be. But you have to understand it's not in this dimension. It's in a dimension that's very, very subtle. This is, the, this is the issue, is that these dimensions inside of us, they're so subtle. They're, they're, they're not in our everyday consciousness. You know, they're not in our everyday waking consciousness. This is, this is one of the things I'm going to be addressing in the... Um, 
in the teacher training, the Wujigong teacher training, is our resistance, our dark side. I talked about this, I think, in the last meeting, but I want to review it again because I think it's such an important thing to understand. And I really appreciate that question, Marius, about this because it's a really important question. This, so we have this invisible aspect inside of us. We can call it our dark side or our personality would call it, oh, you know, you're my resistance. Like, you know, I want to be really successful in my life, but I keep undermining myself, right? That could be a resistance. This is what we go to psychologists for, you know, it's like to try and get in touch with this dark side, so-called dark side, right? But we have to understand that from the perspective of that part of ourselves, and it looks at the light side of us, the side of us that can look out through our eyes and and, and it is in the world and, so, and it looks at us and it, and it sort of goes, oh, you think I'm unconscious inside of you, but you're the one who's unconscious. I have my own needs. I know exactly what I need and you have no idea what I need. And so, and then we get into this battle, you know, between our light side and our dark side or our conscious side and our unconscious side. But actually that's just name calling. Our conscious side is calling our unconscious side unconscious. And in turn, our unconscious side is calling our conscious side unconscious a bit. It's just name calling. So we have to go to a deeper dimension than just this. We have to go deeper. And the Taoists call that early heaven, the early heaven aspect of ourself or the soul aspect of ourself, the part of us that doesn't sleep. It's much, much deeper than our, than our personality's conscious light and dark side battles. And so that's one of the things that I'm going to be sharing with the, in the teacher training course is how to go deeper and not just stay focused in the in the sort of ongoing yin yang battle between your light and dark side and in fact this early heaven place inside of us is what fulfills and fulfills the needs of both the dark and light within us we need to drop down into that dimension wujigong gives us that it gives us the ability to drop down into that dimension and so what i've been trying to do through through development with my own practice is find a way to share with everyone how to do that how to actually dissolve these internal conflicts using wujigong and so we're going to be really going into that on this program of how to do that and how to make it really practical not just a concept but actually a real change how do we actually change these deep patterns that tend to resist what we consciously want, you know? And it's a journey, I'll tell you, it's quite a journey. I, I actually applied it to myself before I start to teach it out, you know? And uh, so anyway, the answer to, to uh, Maris's question is that there, are, there is a deeper dimension inside each one of us called early heaven, where yin and yang is much more flowing and it's much more harmonious. And it, we want to access that dimension inside of us and we want to allow, and we want to make it conscious. And that's what happens when we practice with Jigong. Actually, we awaken that dimension inside of us, this early heaven state. That's, that's why we feel so good when we practice with Jigong, because that, that inner dimension is starting to open up inside of us. The issue becomes, the issue becomes challenging because what happens is we just, we just, oftentimes we just see it as an experience, not as, our truth you know and we say oh it's you know it's like oh that was a nice experience i did my wuji gong and i feel good and then you get on with your life and you go back into the yin yang patterns and you don't allow that really deep dimension that opens up for you in wuji gong to actually start to dissolve your patterns you know so that's where that's a lot of the things that i'm interested in, in training you know and, and really sharing with all of you how how to do that you know and how to not just make it an experience that you do but something that's deeply transformational. So let me see if there's any other questions. And if anyone wants to ask one personally, that would be great. And uh, I just came up from a night shift, just need to get some clothes on back in five minutes. Oh, okay. You came in from a night shift. Great. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> um, Yes. So yeah, I think I've shared everything I want to share about this subject, about separation between spirit and matter and material life and spiritual life. Um, I think I feel like I've shared everything. 
Um, so there really is no separation. It really doesn't exist. Nature doesn't experience it. The reason nature doesn't experience it is because nature's connection to Yuan Shi is much stronger than our connection. Um, and the reason for that is, as I said, is, is because I we, we, our, the human soul was split into a male and female body. This is the number one issue on this planet. Male and female bodies, that is the number one issue. And anyone who's been in a relationship knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it's a soul issue, it's not a sex issue. It's not a battle of the sex issues, okay? It's not that. And if you resolve it on the energy, but if you resolve it at the soul level, your relationships are gonna be much easier. I promise you, much, much easier. Um, the problem is that we're unconscious of the androgynous soul. That's the problem. Unconscious of half of our soul. We identify with only one half of it because we're in a male body or a female body. And so we need to bring in. Jung understood this. He said, look, men have a hidden animus inside of them, anima inside of them, and women have a hidden animus inside of them. And we need to bring those two together and have them function inside and, and harmonize them. And he, he tried to do that through talk therapy. We do that through inner alchemy. He, actually, Jung had a big interest in alchemy in his later life, and he studied it a lot, you know. But he didn't have access to these formulas. He certainly didn't have access to Wu Jigong, but he, but he had an amazing contribution to the world. His soul contributed a lot <clears throat> to the world uh, of our understanding of the inner psyche. <coughs> <laughs> yeah anyway anyway guys any more questions sharings and then i will uh, yes i have end. one and yeah go I ahead have... yeah go ahead yeah. i was curious to because mm. i know you are very spiritual and but maybe there was a time in your life where you mm. were not doing so much Wuji gong, but you mm. still live very spiritual, connected. And how was the difference you felt these days than today, where you are doing this regularly? Can you explain this feeling? Because sure, I can. When I feel my, I'm, I'm connected, and I feel also the difference when I'm doing Wuji gong, but I'm not doing it every day. I just was curious to know what was the difference to feel this connection but now to feel this embodied connection where you feel this involved, you know what I mean? I totally understand, yeah. So I, I would say the difference is, um, yeah, my emotional state is much more stable. I mean, I'm not so up and down. Uh, yeah. Definitely, definitely much more emotionally stable. Um, yeah. And not, so, and not so caught up in the drama and not so much attached to thoughts and feelings. Like the inner child is much more present in my life. And, uh, but I still need regular practice to maintain the connection, you know, like, because this, because this manifesting force, what we have to understand is this manifesting force, this force of creation, the life force has two directions. It has one of manifesting and yeah. evolving, right? We can call the evolution of consciousness if you like it has that direction and that's very powerful in human beings like we're like the cutting edge of evolution and so you know this life inside of us wants to evolve you know it wants to go out into the world and it wants to create and it wants to do all these things right and and we get so caught up in that we love that you know it's wonderful until we start to get sick or we start to feel like oh my God, you know, I'm losing my energy. I'm getting older, you know, or something like that, right? And then we start to realize, oh, but I, there's also a, a flow back to source. There's also a flow back. But that, that energy of going out in human beings is so strong because of this split at the soul level, right? Because of this split into male and female bodies, there's this feeling inside of us of sort of that something's missing, you know? And that is what, drives us out into the world you know that's what drives us so until you resolve this on the inside until you start to make conscious this androgynous soul there's always going to be this sense of incompletion i would say so that's the, that's the other thing that i would say is change for me is there's more a sense of inner completion inside of myself 
like I feel more peace. I feel more mm -hmm. peace. I'm not so focused on the future, for example. I feel more mm -hmm. present in my day-to-day -day life, very in the present moment. And still there are things inside of me. That, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying I'm in a state of perfect peace all the time, but there is a feeling of more completion, more inner completion, like a feeling that I'm completing something that's very important for my soul. Um, primarily through this work, of course, but also in my relationships, you know, in my relationships with others, my relationships have improved immensely since I started working with the inner child and cultivating the inner child. And that for me has been, I guess, a, ch a big challenge in my life, or my relationships for a long time, not just my intimate relationships, but all relationships have been a big challenge as they are for many people. And I think this, that has been a big change for me is like seeing that everyone is myself, you know, that any, mm -hmm. any challenge I have with someone is really a challenge with my own energy body, you know? So it's, it's a journey. It's a process. That's the other thing that's changed for me is that maybe before I was more focused on the end result, you know, getting somewhere. And now I'm much more conscious that it's an actual process. It's, it's a never ending process. It's a journey, you know? And uh, yeah, so there are many things. It's a profound question. I really appreciate you asking that question. I think it's a very important question, <laughs> yes, you know? Uh, because okay. yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah. So I guess I have a question back for you. If would you go and make you feel so good, why why you don't do it every day? And and in, not in a judgmental way, but if it makes you feel no. good, what? Okay, that's go my, ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's my question for myself. Um, ah <laughs> because I I think I'm still the distraction. Is that the word distraction in daily life? Um. But now I, 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 I came to my regular practice again, Great. not Zuji, but my meditation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm still thinking why it's sometimes so, why you're quick back and you're not doing yeah. it. That's what, yeah. why? Yeah. And you yeah. think, okay, I can just meditate. I just was my question. What is the yeah. difference to sit just to meditate and to say, no, my, I use my body for this. Yeah. And that's why I came to this question. Yeah, it's a great question. I want to go into it deeper because it's a really important question. So this is the difference between what we call the five body gods of the personality and the soul. So what happens for all of us is usually one or two of these body gods, they take over. They, they, they're concerned more with survival or they're concerned more with getting a lover or they're concerned with, you know, whatever it is they're concerned with, they, they, they take over from the soul in a way. And, 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 and you have to bring these bodyguards, you have to bring them into consciousness. That's what fusion of the five elements is about. You have to bring them into consciousness. You have to become aware of them primarily. Wujigong helps you do that because Wujigong cultivates the core self, it cultivates the soul. And now the soul has this awareness and it can see, oh, here's this part of me that wants to do this. And here's this part of me that wants to do that. And they're all looking for completion, these body gods. But they, oftentimes they're looking for the completion in the outer world. They're not looking for it inside. They're looking for it outside. And that's the conflict that most people have. And, and it takes a little while to really get the soul to be in charge. And, and to, to um, let, let me give you a practical example, something yeah. that happened last night, okay? So I'm in the middle here in Bali of looking for a new home and something came up and I was like, oh, this is perfect for us. This is a perfect place for us. And I wrote to the person and, uh, and they said, oh yeah, contact this person. He's the owner and you know, you can, you can, you know, get the place. It's still available. And I told my partner and I said, yeah, I think we can have this place. It's perfect for us. And, oh, it's good. Oh, it's great. And then when I got in touch with the owner, he said, oh no, it's already rented. And, um, and, uh, and it's a doctor who's rented it, you know, and I could, and I could see one of my body spirits, you know, my, the lung spirit in me, it suddenly just got sad and, 
and it went into a little story about like, oh, life doesn't support me, and oh, and, you know, and I could and I could go on that journey, you know, I could actually go on that journey and allow that whole story to play out, but I didn't because my soul connection is so much stronger. I could honor the feelings, I could honor that I was sad about it, but I didn't have to go into the whole story around it. And my soul just brought me back very quickly into a place of love and acceptance for myself. And, and, and that's a great example of how those body spirits, they, they, just, they just have a life of their own. You know? And if you don't understand that, if you don't understand that you're a committee inside, that you have all these, these different streams that come out of the senses, you know? like the lungs are very much related with the, the sense of smell, the, the, the liver with the eyes. You know? But these are, these are not just physical things. These are actually body spirits they're 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 involved in in managing our of our, our life they're managing our life you know and we have to get conscious of them and we have to and we have to bring them under the under the the power of the soul of the soul yeah. and and not let one of them run the roost you know a lot one one of them is usually a bully you know and, yeah. we, and we say, and we say, oh, that's Andrew. That's Andrew. He, you know, that's who I am. No, no, it's just one of your shin. That's what you have to understand. And that's, that's what I'm interested in, in educating people about is because that is what's most profound about the Taoist alchemy is that understanding your body spirits. It's, it's so imperative to understand that. Mm -hmm. And this is why, you know, we can live a healthy lifestyle and do all the right things and still get sick. Because one of these body spirits has been depressed, has been suppressed inside of us, you know. So yeah, this I, this is very very profound. Yeah, go ahead, Martin. Go ahead. And sometimes I I also have kind of a feeling that this stepping into this great feeling is sometimes so much. It's it's almost that I say no, I don't do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's so stupid. It's also, it's honestly because I had these moments in my life, and sometimes it's that just blew me away so maybe i was like I, this energy is strong That's yes yes and the soul is so powerful the yeah. soul is so powerful it's so and powerful i i think this is a point where i am sometimes struggling remember we started last time and my whole kidney power it was so strong so painful i was like oh, can i hold this you know uh -huh. I think yeah. This yeah. Is, yeah. i will just want to add this yeah yeah, no, it's wonderful. It's great. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fear in there. To actually, we actually have a lot of fear to embodying our power, to embodying yeah. the power that we have inside. You know, and uh, this is why the inner smile is so important. You know, is to really, it's, it's, we, we all have to learn to be a little bit more gentle with ourselves and more have a little bit more of a sense of humor, and um, not take these body spirits so seriously. You know. Seriousness is one of the big issues with, with these body spirits. They they get they get used to their power, and they you know, and actually what we have to, and, and they have wonderful power, but we have to rein them in in a way. Like all traditions talk about this. They talk about they talk about you know controlling the senses. You know, mm -hmm. but for the Taoist, it's not about control. It's about awareness and it's about self love. And it's about understanding the different dimensions of it, what it is to be a human being. We have these different dimensions inside of us and we have to get conscious of them. Mm -hmm. So as I said, most people when they practice Wuji, they, they, a lot of times they'll practice and they'll practice for a few weeks and they have a honeymoon phase and then they stop because mm -hmm. things start to change and these unconscious things start to come up. And I always encourage people to just, just, just to, you know, to observe that and I, I do my best to encourage people to, for them to understand what's actually going on what's going on is these aspects that are unconscious inside of us are, are becoming more conscious and that's why we stop the practice because they're coming up would you go is very is very subtle but very powerful it changes you at a very deep level and our shed don't like that change and so we resist it we resist it but after a while as you as you discover that it's so blissful and so beautifully there, you you want to keep practicing, you know, like you you want to keep going. No, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> Thank you. But it's a great question. I, I really appreciate the question so much. So thank you so much for asking. It's really great, and I'm sure it's helpful for many people, you know, to to hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, go ahead, Adele. I think you wanted to speak. Yes. I, uh, 
I was reflecting on, on the biggest change I've experienced since I started practicing with Yugong in February last year. And, um, and also, the, also the journey of, of resistance. So, so one thing that's really changed for me is I used to ex expect so much of myself to achieve in every day, like, like a to-do list that's never ending and, um, and, and feeling impatient and frustrated and, and everything else that comes with really not achieving the to-do list besides exhausting myself and, <laughs> and, and, and the judgment and everything that goes with that. And, and, um, and being aware of that pattern, being aware of it for years, but still not being able to shift it. So, uh, and, and, and um, what's really a shifted for me is that I, I, um, I expect so much less of myself every day, you know, I have my, but it's started to become a natural thing. So, so um, I would, um, I would just naturally say, well, this is the focus of the day. And, and it happens in the moment. It's not even sometimes planned. So also where it was an extensive plan, um, I don't, I flow with it, with what, what the day presents and, and Beautiful. without feeling, the impatience still sometimes arise, but not right, as, right. Not, not, yeah. not so much the impatience of wanting to do more, but it's it's um, no. it's much less. And and together with it, I I'm doing things that I that I resisted in the past that I'm loving to do now, like housekeeping and, and cooking, things that I kind of want to do but wanted to do, but felt that all these other yang activities and achieve something that's more that's that that was that was perceived to be a better an achievement than preparing a lovely meal um, um and getting impatient with preparing the meal because i haven't achieved my list now i'm loving preparing the meal and it's really that my destiny is flowing more that i'm just uh, that i that i with with actually noticing at times that oh, I'm, I'm living my life. I'm living what, what, uh, without having this extreme sense of achievement. Uh, but yeah. with all of that, I had a lot of resistance. And it, at times I would resist the practice um, because it was bringing all of that up. And that's, right. and that's yeah. also dissolving. So I just, yeah. just yeah. from... From yeah. very practically, I, yeah. I guess the, what if we call, if we call about my worldly destiny, is yeah. is flowing more naturally. Besides yeah. my spiritual yeah. destiny, and and now being able to go on the teacher training, which I'm really excited about. So thank you. Yeah, yeah that's I think that's a great example of some of your shen being very dominant. You know, that's a great example, mm -hmm. like of the liver. You know, the liver can be very orientated. The wood, the wood. The Hun, what we call the Hun spirit, is very much future orientated and 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 goal orientated. The the the, the heart Shen can be very impatient, you know. And what's what's really beautiful is that these are patterns that are you know oftentimes they're imprinted as astrologically, you know, like at birth they're part of our karma. This this challenge that you're facing is actually there's nothing wrong with it, but getting conscious of it and dissolving it. And you'll, you'll find as you, as you go forward with your practice is that that energy will become more and more in harmony and more and more in balance for you. And you'll be able to use that in, 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 in a more harmonious way. You know? So there's nothing wrong fundamentally with being goal orientated. It's, it's, but you can probably see now you've got the objectivity. You can probably see now that that was probably just a, a loop. And it was like a waste of energy. It was just going on continuously. It's like a loop, a loop, a loop, a loop, a loop. And now you've, 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 you've started to step back a little bit and, and things are becoming more balanced and more harmonious. And yeah, and, and yeah, wonderful. And, and the whole point is to dissolve these patterns to, to really like lessen their influence on our life so that our soul, the quiet voice of our soul can come more forward. You know, and it's, it takes time. It, you know, it's not an instant fix, as you've discovered. It takes time. And that's one of the things that is very clear to me, that we need time, you know, because these patterns have been imprinted over many years, you know, maybe even many lifetimes, you know, and it does take time. But eventually the soul starts to shine through, 
you know, the soul comes through. And then that becomes our, our, our guide, you know, it's our guiding, that, that feeling in Wujigong that we get when we lie down at the end and we feel this deep peace, that's the soul's vibration coming in, you know. And we want that vibration to start flowing into our body gods, to, into, our, into our personality, so that it starts to uh, be reflected, you know. And, and that is a process, you know, that is, that is our evolution, that is our destiny. I really appreciate you sharing, Adele, thank you. It really, it's, I'm sure it's very helpful for people to hear that. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Let's unpin that. Great. Ah, okay. <laughs> So wonderful to have so many. Uh, and can you add the spirit of the earth um, of this discussion by everyone? Thank you, Andrew. And can you add the spirit of the earth? Can you explain what you mean by the spirit of the earth? Uh, you mean the yi, Martina? What? You yeah, you about? said the Han and the Chen, and then I was suddenly and the earth. The, you know. Ah, the earth. Yeah, that's what we call the yi spirit. It's the it's the I, creative it's the creative imagination. It's the center. It's one of the most yeah. challenging. It's one of the most challenging ones to to shift because it's our uh, That's what I'm center. asking. That's what I'm asking because I have so much. That's why I I think that's my bully. <laughs> yes, right, 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 right. Yes. So okay. yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. If you have a lot of earth, yeah. So in your five element charts, you mean in your yeah, yeah, yeah great, yeah, yeah. So that's actually, I'm going to be doing I'm going to be doing that on the teacher training. I'm going to have everyone do show me their five element chart we'll do the five element chart and uh we'll use that in our training we'll use that because it's so for those of you um mentor cheer and also some other Taoist teachers they have this software that can show you the constant the, if you know your time of birth you have to know the time and um, it can show you the balance of these five body gods inside of you and so when you see that you can really learn a lot about yourself but honestly you don't need to know it I mean, to, to benefit yeah. from Wujigong because Wujigong automatically harmonizes that, you know, harmonizes that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. So, everyone, I think I'm going to end the, the meeting tonight. It's been wonderful talking with you. I just, I just love it. I just love this uh, ability to connect with so many people from around the world. And uh, it's it's sort of been a blessing of the coronavirus. I know for many teachers like myself, and you know, many of you probably are working from home now and, and doing different things online and stuff. And it doesn't. It's not the same as being in person. I mean, one of the things that happened to me when I came to Bali is we have friends here, and I was saying to my partner, "Oh my God, I just got to go and talk to my friends. I was just wanting to talk to my friends all the time because I haven't seen them for so long, haven't been in close proximity, you know. And it's just like I can feel, like, oh God, I I got to talk, I got a hug, <laughs> you know. And it's been so great, you know. It's been so wonderful because we've been, you know, pretty much just with ourselves for the last year, you know, and in Romania where they've had some very strict lockdowns, and, you know. So it's been wonderful to be here in Bali and just be with our friends and everything's so much more relaxed here. Um, it's just very open, you know, so it's, it's been great. You know? <laughs> so I want to thank everyone uh, for joining me. Um, hello. What's that? Someone's putting up something here. I can't see what you put, man. Let me, uh, let me go bigger. Uh, uh, happy birthday. Oh, 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 thank you. <laughs> Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you. Oh, I feel so touched. Happy birthday Thank you to so you, much. Andy. Oh, bless you, bless you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I'm 64 today. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> still very young. <laughs> I still very, I feel, I feel like a 20 year old. I'll be honest with you, you know. Yeah. Master Shia is 77. Right, so still... right, right. Yeah, these Taoist practices, they really work. They really work, you know, they really work. Yeah. We had the uh, bone, uh, bone marrow with Master Chi a couple of days ago. Yesterday, he was oh. yesterday, and I was practicing right. with you, the, you know, every night, every, I, before I go to bed, I do the meditation since last December, the, the bone breathing. Ah. And it really benefited a lot. 
Yeah. So right. I felt, but I, I feel your your way is more the yin and Master Shi is more the yang part. So that made a great balance. Too. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Master Shi is very yang. He's one of the most yang people I know, actually. I mean, he's great, you know. But you know, the greater the yang, the greater yeah. the yin. The greater the yin. So his personality yeah, but, uh, is very yang. Yeah, you know? also. But yeah. you are one of uh, the best students of Master Shia. You know, I always appreciate your teaching, and thank you so much for the oh. bone breathing uh, practice mm. we had. I really, it's a blessing to me in my life. It, it you know, it works for me very well. Would you like so to every, certify it? Every Would day, you? I. I would you like to certify that now? Because if you've had actual, you know, you, you can certify that in my with my school if you want. You can be a bone breathing uh, educator because if it's benefited you, you can actually share it on with other people. So all that's required is you yeah. just do an well, you I, do an I, I will see. Yeah, if yeah, you want I will. To. I will see because I, I had yeah I had um, too much stuff since last uh, November. Okay. Yes, like okay. I mean. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, okay, I just uh, wanted yeah. I just wanted to make Picture it clear. Was... Yeah, I just want to make it clear that if you've had yeah. benefits Thank from you it, so you can certify in it. You just yeah. do an interview with me and let me know what's changed and you know what's happened. Sure. But, but sure. no problem. I, I understand you know if you, when I'm ready for that. If you have pressure, I understand. Yeah. Just take your time. The Dow is all about Thank flows. Thank you so, so. much. <laughs> Great. Okay, bye. I <laughs> anyway, want to say bye. Yeah. Have a wonderful birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank bye -bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lots of love, everyone. Ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye. bye.